Okay, so this is punk writing, parsing all the punks, and today we have with us Keith Dickinson and author goddess Sarah B. And I am Coffee, I will be your chimera today. So a little bit about the people who have joined us on this panel. Keith, tell us about yourself. Um, I'm an author of uh, steampunk writing. Um, I've got a couple of books out. Um, I've been and it, well, I've been published for a couple of years. I've been writing since I was eight years old. And my latest thing I've actually started on a solar punk Ooh. story, which we can get into a bit later. Um, because I think, it, well, it's necessary. <laughs> okay. Author goddess, Sarah B. And I am author goddess, Sarah Berman. Um, I am an author. <laughs> Uh, whether I'm a goddess or not is up to you. Uh, I have, oh gosh, so many, I, I have a lot of publications and some of them delve into punk and that is why I'm here. We're going to talk about that as well. Uh, later on, Keith and Sarah will be dropping their links in the chat if you want to go check out their books. Uh, my name is Coffee. A bunch of you already know me. I am also an author. Right now, I do not have a publishing of any type of punk. However, I am working on a several different kinds. And we're going to go into the definitions a bit later after we talk about what is punk. So forget, forget the first part of whatever we say. Cyberpunk, mage punk, steampunk. Forget the first part. Cut that in half. Keith, what is punk? Um, <laughs> punk is just an alternate way of thinking, an alternate way of doing things, um, because it originated with punk music, which was just different to what was traditionally being done, and was open to people who couldn't even play instruments half the time, you know, but they were out there and they were doing it and they were getting involved, and they were trying to change things to be more inclusive. Um, yeah. and to be different. Yeah. I, I like that phrasing. Being yeah. different. Sarah Berman, do you want to add anything to that? How do you see punk? Um, well, I was introduced to the entire punk concept through, of course, Billy Idol. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and artists like that. So for me, punk has been about... Um, kind of being the opposite of the man uh, and being uh, rebellious in a, a way that is both aggressive and, well, to, to not go into politics really, but to kind of touch on it, very leftist. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's it was the Antifa of the seventies. It was it was that kind of thing, and so the the punk aesthetic kind of gets applied to all of these various subcategories as kind of adding that attitude onto it. Adding that onto it. So we have a couple of comments from our audience where Green Augment says, and we'll talk about Adam Punk later. But they're like, wait, Adam Punk is like Flash Gordon laser. <laughs> and we'll, we'll go into a lot of the pre-punk word. I love it. We'll go pre-later. So no worries about that. Green Augment says, punk equals spiky hair and studs, right? Originally. Yeah. Originally. Definitely. Originally. But the word has certainly developed over the years. I mean, if you go back to the 70s, yeah, it was spiky hair and studs, but now it's I think, well as we were discussing earlier it's like the word gate putting the word gate and anything you know it's any kind of scandal it's not just watergate and it's just anything that someone political has done wrong or it not, doesn't even have to be political anymore so now it's just punk just means alternative you know, yeah it, it doesn't it's not specific to any dress or anything like that it's just different I see both of your punk definitions like going against and rebelling and as author goddess said the man 
And that's kind of what I've arrived at to what punk is, at least for me. And as we said earlier in the chat, there's not going to be at one definition every single person agrees on. But to me, punk is going against what is common. Hmm. And that actually goes back to what was said about spiky hair and studs. If spiky hair and studs is common, then punk is going to be, I don't know, a clean cut or yeah. pigtails and a bow tie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I chased away your thought. Uh, Benaria says attitude. A lot of leftists are punk in nature because punk itself is about attitude. Hmm. And I can definitely get behind that. But it's interesting. It just it just occurred to me now that uh, the way that um, advertising uses going against the man and being an individual, you know, diesel genes will say, hey, be an individual by diesel genes. It's like, well, really? Or, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's become kind of mainstream. And even a lot of just general storylines, you know, your, your uh, hero cops who are always going against the man, the captain, doing what needs to be done. And it's like, so yeah, it's kind of everywhere now. They can take our aesthetic, but they'll never take our freedom. <laughs> so Satrum says, I've never really heard of definition for punk, but in fiction at least, it's always something gritty with a lot of inequality and going against that established thing. And RPG Dinosaur Bob goes, eh, coffee? Common might not be the best word choice for that. Going against accepted, because it's not quite the same. And I, I can I can dig it. <laughs> like the status quo. Yeah. Maybe and going against also, what you're supposed to do. Random thought. The reason that there are no static definitions for punk is because it is not punk to be on a definition. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. The definition itself cannot be static because then it would not be punk. I enjoy that. The definition itself is a contradiction, a paradox. So with that in mind, and we've talked about what punk means to each of us, um, Sarah, why, why did you start with punk? Like, why did you publish some punk? Um, I like taking things and twisting them around because um, you know, I, I, I am literally the, the kind of person who would write a hero that would go into a haunted house, go into the basement, look at whatever monster was down there and just be like, is this really how you want to do it? Is this really how you, are, are we playing this game? Because I can run faster than you. <laughs> you know, like, um, the, that that snarky um, attitude of you can't keep me down you can't you can't force me to behave the way you want me to kind of thing really appeals to me in the way I write my characters okay I like this Benara says Schrodinger's punk <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoy that one what about you Keith what drew you to punk why did you want to write that um well, with the steampunk, he was actually, at the time I had an agent who was trying to hop a um, fantasy noir that I'd written. And so, not knowing if that would sell, I didn't want to write a sequel, so I wanted to write something different. And steampunk for me actually started with the aesthetic, you know, the hats and the waistcoats and all that. Um, but also, I wanted to do something like, like Pratchett's Discworld, you know, the, and the way he subverts norms with having the heroes and the, the werewolves act differently to how you expect heroes and werewolves to act um, and so I thought steampunk was a good opportunity to do that because it is at the time well even now still not so well defined you know, mm. apart from cogs and stuff like that and monster but the actual what shape of the story can be is still quite open um, so I thought it was a great opportunity to dive in on that okay and you're saying that you wrote steampunk, so now I'm going to ask, can you drop your link into the chat or actually give me, 
I will go back into the chat and take your link that you gave me, because I realized you might not be on Twitch. Um, I've got it running in a tab. Oh, nice. Awesome. Then I will let you drop it in there. And Author Goddess, I'm going to ask you to drop your link in here to your punk as well. No, no worries. Okay, so. Okay, so we've got both the books in there, and we've talked about why each of you wanted to write punk. So now we're going to get a little bit into the subgenre of punk. Why okay. did you want to write your particular punk? So Author Goddess, we'll go back to you. Can you tell us a little bit about what you call your punk? Um. I tend to go towards mage punk, and um, well, I I also have a kind of spinoff series of the rune spells that I'm working on that is kind of a mage punk 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 because um, it's set in relatively modern day, and she is actually, you know, barely. Uh, on you know she's on the streets she's nomadic lifestyle she's Doc Martens and spiky hair and tattoos and, and also a witch and you know so she's very punk punk but also mage punk because she ain't fitting in with no coven but um it, th that is more of a uh, I, I wanted to write the story and then I went oh that's mage punk I didn't sit down and go, I'm going to write a mage punk. Here it is. No, um, it, the, the tag came later. Uh, but uh, I, I, you know, like I said, I love writing characters that just kind of flip the bird. Um, very, I'm, I'm really, really big into the uh, damn the man, um, you know, power to the people, doing what's right even when it's not the status quo kind of thing so that feeds really well into um me ending up having books that get labeled punk i can see that i and this is where we start getting into some punks are better known than others when keith mentions steampunk i definitely get an image i mean maybe that's helped by my uh, hair clip but I definitely get an image of what steampunk is. Mage punk. Does your main character carry around a wizard staff? Um, actually, in in that particular book, uh, which is the switchblade tattoo, uh, she gets magical tattoos. Uh, she has a tattoo artist who um, both of them are former skinheads. And they do a, a spell while she's getting the tattoo, and so the magic is embedded in the tattoos that she has. Um, that, that's kind of how that whole aesthetic comes in. Uh, but pretty much any magic user that does things really differently and kind of fights against the establishment. I would even argue that like uh, the Dresden Files is mm. a little mage punk because he's constantly bucking against <laughs> the rest of the, the magic users in that world to do what's right over what is accepted. Well, like hell John Constantine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, th these, are, these are people who, yeah, they're doing their thing and they're doing it to exactly the amount that they have to do it because that's how the magic system works and everything else can F off. <laughs> okay, so RPG Dinosaur Bob actually has a comment to Author Goddess. He's hearing an echo on when you speak. Has somebody unmuted Twitch? 
Um, I know in my section I have not unmuted Twitch. I've got to take my glasses off to see that little red button that says it's still muted. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay. So that's an interesting idea about the Dresden Files being mage punk. I read the files and never actually connected that, but I can see that very easily as definitely being punk because all he does is go against the system <laughs> and all the magic he has at his command. Keith, I know a lot of people have an image of steampunk. Do you have your own image and what is it? Hmm. <laughs> well, I'll certainly, certainly have my own image. Um, I was trying to think about this recently, especially in terms of like what I think the um, like English steampunk is more sort of whimsical. Okay. Um, so bright colours, silly hats, big clocks on handbags, um, and you get the the Japanese steampunk, which is more sort of leather and mechanical and mechanical arms and stuff. Um, some great cosplay stuff going on in Japan. And then you even get like um, American Steampunk, which has a side of um, magic mysticism and demonic stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to just develop my own idea of what the Steampunk is. Um, it's a bit locked down, really. Like I say, it's still, it's, even though you, we have an idea of this, I think it's still emerging as a story. Um, I don't, it's not, a lot of the, the big publishers have, and um, bookshops and that have given up on Steampunk. They tried briefly, it didn't sell enough in the time. I've been told this by an agent. Mm. You know, the um, bookshops won't take it because it doesn't sell. So oh. publishers won't print it, so agents won't take it off. And the cycle yeah. continues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that is so yeah. punk. <laughs> so I'm just out there trying to tell good stories. And mm. I think that the, the historical setting, especially with the class system involved, gives you a great opportunity to do that. So my hero, um, John Sinister, is just he's a working class lad, but he's got a, a high education. And he keeps getting hired by the rich people to go in and stick his nose in where it's not wanted. <laughs> and it's very much he upsets the applicants each and every time. Nice. Um, we have a question for RPG Dinosaur Bob. Is the first Doctor Strange almost kind of mage punk? Um, have either of you seen the first Doctor Strange? I haven't, so I can't answer this question. Yeah. You guys think it's mage punk ish? I don't know. You know, it. That's an interesting question because the, like for the the maging aspect, like Doctor Strange's lesson was literally to stop bucking the system. Like that was kind of his whole personality, and you know, my favorite line from the first movie. I hope we're talking about the movies. <laughs> Um, I, as far as I know, we're talking about the I movies. Have the, I have not read the comic <laughs> books. I, I'm vaguely familiar with them in the periphery, but um, no. The, the first, the first movie, the the big line was, "It's not about you," and him being able to embrace that was kind of the whole point. And while that has kind of a punkish feel, in the sense that he didn't do the normal thing in order to mm -hmm. do the right thing. That aspect is, is is punk, I would say, but he's not really bucking the entire system or anything. He's he's more embracing this this subculture of mages. So I, it, it would be arguable. But, you know, I mean, sorry, I'm laughing at the. It's arguable. By the way, just remember that our definition of punk is also arguable. <laughs> We don't know. Yeah. Anything to add to that, Keith? Or 
You think um, maybe it's well, anti hero? He becomes he himself becomes the sorcerer supreme in the end, so he kind of he redirects the system. He doesn't go entirely against it. You could almost say that the I haven't seen the second one. I haven't watched that tonight. But the guy I can't remember his name who looks at the whole thing. Oh, this is nonsense. Let's get away from this. Let's change that. Not the antagonist. The the chap who leaves again. Uh, too many sorcerers. Yes, too many sorcerers. He that's kind of a fun idea. Like, no, this isn't working when he's changed this. Yeah. Satrum says for him, it guess it depends on your viewpoint and what you see as established view, science, or magic. Mm hmm. And so. Both of you have talked about the type of punks you have. Now, my question is what books have you read that you consider a reference? If someone wants to get into more of what you write and how you write, what other books do they have to look at? <laughs> Who wants to go first? I've been I've been channeling my inner teacher and calling <laughs> on you like students. And I'm like, wait, wait, these are adults. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of feel that it's less books and more movies that okay. you get exposed to punks in. So, you know, like, um, and a lot of the, the movies did come from comic books or books or, you know, like more uh, niche media first. Because um, my, my exposure are things like Tank Girl. Um, I would argue that, like, Johnny Mnemonic is very cyberpunk. Definitely cyberpunk. Uh, Hack the, the world, matrix. baby. Hack the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mnemonic, you were on some of the original cyberpunk stuff, you know. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, the the non-movie media was, was very niche, and not many people saw it, but lots of people saw the movies for these things. So I'd say I was exposed more through the movies. Okay. Yeah, with steampunk kind of like coming up with books is different because there isn't that many out there. The industry doesn't get into them. Um, but yeah, you definitely got like Steam Boy um, mm. and the Pooh that Castle in the Sky, very Castle in the Sky, yeah. Yeah, early steampunk stuff. Um, even uh, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Mm -hmm. You know, because the idea of the, the, the modern weapons but in a historical setting, all the the huge, huge cars and ships and the submarines and stuff. Um, it's very steampunky. Um, it's one of my faves. <laughs> yeah, lots of, lots of movies because it's a very visual thing. So it yeah. well, and well. a lot of early fantasy really kind of slid right into the steampunk aesthetic in a lot of ways. You know, whether it was the originals or reimaginings, they just slip right in there. Okay. I kind of have to agree with you on that. I, I realize after you guys went, eh, kind of more movie than book. And I'm like, huh. And I, I'm frantically trying to think through my book collection. I'm like, what exactly would I pull out as steampunk? Mm. And the only one my brain can actually come up with is the Parasol Protectorate series by Gail Carriger. And I know that there are people who would say, eh, 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 coffee, that's not steampunk, that's gas lamp. And I'm like, ah, yeah. that's not even yeah. steampunk, it's gas lamp. Yeah, gas lamp fantasy, um, you do get that as well. That has more sort of um, the spooky side. Mm. Um, that's more sort of mm -hmm. paranormal. That's yeah. Paranormal, which makes me wonder if maybe Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, <laughs> even mm. though it was set during the age of the Industrial Revolution, so perfect for steampunk, I wonder if that would actually be more gas lamp. And Teep Jib yeah. Art has a question, actually, and why I'm pulling this up quickly. What is the main difference, on a technical term, between steampunk and gas lamp? Who wants to take this question? Uh, 
off the top of my head, I would say that steampunk is more about the inventions mm. and the progress, um, it, and you know, to to maintain the the punk concept uh, very much against the way that is historically accurate, but also against what um, the the setting specifically allows and or requires. Um, Gaslight is more like, uh, well, I, I immediately go to the movie Gaslight, where, you know, you have that kind of um, creepy thriller, horror, suspense kind of feel surrounding that specific kind of technology, whether it is historically accurate or not. Hmm. And yeah, then, of course, both delving both into the fantasy aspect of that. Yeah, they're both kind of alternate history kind of stories. But I think in Gas and Fantasy, I expect more sort of supernatural mm. elements, whereas Steampunk very much, like I said, mechanics and kind of horses and airships and stuff. See, when I think Gaslight Fantasy or Gaslight Horror, I, I think of that Doctor Who episode with um, it was. Uh, when Rose and the doctor went back to England and had the ghosts and it was ghosts they, they were actually in the gas lines but they were actually aliens and okay so spoiler alert <laughs> <laughs> well hope you didn't you know, uh, hope you already watched that, that. So, yeah they, they met Charles Dickens it was funny <laughs> I definitely think I can agree with steampunk has more of a focus on engineering invention um, whether or not it's working <laughs> whether or not you can stop the evil mechanical thing from taking over gaslamp itself is more the paranormal the fantasy the not yet electricity, we're still using the gas lamps. So again, it's very much more of a setting. Um, and I'm going to backtrack on my own, what I said earlier about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, that I think it could be both. If hmm. there, if someone re, 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 da, 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 I speak English, I swear. If someone had a retelling of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and focused more on an invention to capture the creature or an invention to one up <laughs> the formula for someone else to go head to head with the monster, that would be more on the steampunk side of things. You're focused on the invention, the creation. But if someone was just going through the streets and maybe trying to figure out what is this creature that I keep seeing shadows of? I keep hearing screams of the victims and the screams of, you know, Dr. Jekyll as well as he transforms. <laughs> that might be more the gas lamp side. So the original story would be more gas lamp. Yeah. And the uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen side would be more steampunk. Yeah. And RPG Bob says he used science. And I do agree that he used science, but he drank a formula. Yeah, it was alchemy. It was science. Hand wave. More hand wave. <laughs> so. It was science in the same way that faster than light speed is science. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a hand I'm wave. Saying, I'm, he's not muted exclusively. I'm trying to bring in some more sort of Science, but mystically, oh, yeah. magically elements into my steampunk stuff. And that just makes it fun. Hmm. Okay, so earlier you mentioned Keith Hellboy as steampunk. No. No? no I didn't. Oh. Did you author Gomez? I, I, I don't think anybody mentioned it, but <laughs> now that you say it, sure. Well, yeah, I'm not. I'm not awesome. I'm, I'm hearing voices now. We have a fourth person. <laughs> who is trying to tune in with us and offer their opinions as well. <laughs> Speaking of gas lamp. <laughs> Speaking of gas lamp, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So thinking about punk itself, what 
do you think when writing anything punk is the most important thing that should be there? And I'm going to make this harder for you. Besides the fact that they are going up against the man, is there anything else you think is super important to have? I think it's the character. Go ahead. Please. I I think it's the characters. I think that a, a lot of it comes down to the personalities of the characters, the attitudes, the choices that they make, et cetera, et cetera. That's what really, in my mind, solidifies it as being a punk, you know, in, you know, whatever subgenre of that it is, it is, it's less about the setting. It's le- you know, that, that just tells me what kind of punk it is. But the, <laughs> the punk itself, I think is more about the characters and, you know, their, their actions, their motivations, their attitudes, things like that. So it, okay. very character driven genre. Yeah. Um, for me, I, it's about I like well elements of social justice when we talk about punk being a left idea, um, and so having gay characters and then what they have to deal with, or having you know one things like about steampunk is more more opportunity for female characters to be in what weren't then traditional female roles, you know, um, so just a way of reimagining how it was with a view of, to how it could be in the world um, with more social justice and more equality. I'm actually going to agree more with Keith on this one. And it's not just about the characters, but for me, when I read anything with punk, when I write anything with punk, I really feel there has to be inequality somewhere. Hmm. Because I guess for me, and this is a personal opinion, if there's no inequality, I'm kind of curious what you're fighting against. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure that's a very loaded thought, <laughs> and I'm sure there is a list probably a mile long. Coffee, does your inequality include this, 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 this? But I know for me, when I write about it, it's more about something is unequal to someone mm. and it doesn't have to be, it shouldn't be. Mm. And that needs to be remembered for me, just as much, just as important as going against the system. Now, I think that does come together, the system, inequality, oh, hey, I think I see a puzzle piece yeah, <laughs> that's the, connecting the right here. The meaning of all the inequality. Um, yeah, the exactly. Systemic racism, systemic everything that we we get taught. You know, we get taught differences between us, and then we perpetuate. Okay. And so I just I, know, I like the way that the stories look at these things to go. What if those weren't there? Does it make a difference? Would it make a difference? Mm. Yeah, I can definitely see that. So, we are going to go a little bit, because I think we've discussed the punk piece enough. We're going to go a little bit into the many, many slices (laughs) of punk. Because if if you have a cake... Punk can definitely be cut into a lot of slices. So if I have a cake, punk is probably cherry pie. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. If I have a cake, punk is probably cherry pie. I'm going to include the audience in this one. And this is the point where we're going to take a bit of a five minute break. Is that good for you two? Stretch yeah. your legs, get something to drink. Okay. Audience members, that goes for you as well. Stretch your legs, get something to drink. If you need coffee, get coffee. If you need more coffee, come back in five minutes. <laughs> yes, am I going to try to write cake punk? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Cake punk. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 
<laughs> so we asked the audience what exactly, what punks they know of, and the first person to explain <laughs> gets the next one to go. So uh, good luck. We have, I'm looking at the chat now, cyberpunk. That is the concept of using cybernetics to enhance one's body, but doing so in a way that that is considered a low class thing. So like a lot of cyberpunks would be like, you're not rich enough to actually get an organic part. You are stuck with this mechanical part and there's discrimination involved there. So you might have enhancements, but you also have discrimination. Keith, anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I mean, usually set in a dystopian future where corporations have taken over everything. You've got the super rich at the top and uh, the scummy people at the bottom. Um, the yeah, usual dystopian hierarchy. Okay. And Keith, because you were second to answer, I, I have to punish you somehow. <laughs> Do you have a recommendation of anything cyberpunk, movie or book, or comic even? Um, well, obviously the, the original cyberpunk book, Neuromancer, which became yes. the movie Johnny Mnemonic, um, is a good place to start. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I like that. Keith's like, easy, I got this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a, that was a softball. Um, the, I haven't played Cyberpunk 2077. I don't know if it works yet. Okay, but, that's uh, a good point. Video games, I forgot to mention. It's, yeah, it's a good place to go into. Next up? Desert Punk. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so both Keith and Arthur Goddess are like, ah, no. Um, I have actually, I have actually uh, delved into this one a little bit. I have a Desert Punk novel that I am plotting out and writing. Oh. Desert Punk, Desert Punk is usually, but not always, on another planet, which I thought was interesting, because oh. if you are doing your punk when everything's post-apocalyptic and a dry desert on Earth, it becomes scavenger punk or waste punk. And okay. so desert punk normally talks about a different planet where, similar to Tatooine in the Star Wars system, it's a desert place to live, maybe with a couple of cities or oasises. Mm. Um, I haven't really seen any other books or movies except for, and it's been a long time since I've read it, Dune. Hmm. Yeah. I was going to say Dune or um, Pitch Black might fit into Pitch that Black well. would be a great one, actually. It's been a while since I've seen that, too. <laughs> okay, next up Ocean Punk. I imagine that's people living underwater with big underground cities and things. Um, the Disney uh, cartoon movie of um, Atlantis. Disney cartoon movie of Atlantis. Um, Waterworld. Anyone remember that, Jem? Yeah. Oh, oh, um, uh, Sequest. Sequest the, as well. The series from the 90s. <laughs> so, yeah. So, exactly, okay. as Keith was saying, it's ocean based. You're either living, and I've seen more on top of the ocean, where everything is water, than I've really seen under the water, but... Yeah, I was thinking, like, the, the Gungans in Star Wars. I was gonna you know, say, like, hey, mermaid punk anyone? I can definitely get into it. Could you, could you make an argument that Stargate Atlantis is, what, is ocean punk? Yeah. Yeah. To start up on the board. I think you've got enough characters going for the punk. Hmm. And this one I'm actually going to give to you, Keith, because I know you specifically wanted to talk about it. Solar Punk. Ah. Solar Punk um, is, well, as far as I can tell, a, a better future, a utopian future in a way, where we're not living against nature, we're living more in harmony with nature. So solar powered, wind powered, um, little waste, um, little destruction, and yet still the compass of modern technologies, you know. Um, yeah, I, if I'm going to, I just started on a sort of fun story, um, and it's very much. I want to 
write something that shows how things could be. You know, we talk about conflict. This is actually a story where everything's fine. But yeah. the point is to show people now who are looking at all the um, injustice going around the world and all that nonsense in America with Roe versus Wade, not stuff we've got over here where they're trying to take away, our, literally trying to take away our human rights, to go, what happens if we stop being dicks to each other and just start working together? We can have a nice future. And that's, I want to present that as, this is what we're aiming for. Mm-hmm. And even within that, there's still conflicts. Cause the, mm. the story, like, um, I don't know if you've seen the Ghibli movie, Whisper of the Heart, where you've got a young girl basically trying to find her, find her place in the world. Mm-hmm. That's her, it's, a, it's an internal conflict, find out who she is. Um, mm-hmm. So there's, there's still a story to be had. It doesn't yeah. have to be the world's coming at you. <laughs> that's, that's a very good point with solar punk. And I still feel my idea of inequality fits me. But I admit I'd have to look a lot harder at solar punk because it's supposed to be a utopia. Mm. And having a utopia kind of negates my thought of having inequality. To a mm. point. To a point. Um, I'm going to bring up Logan's Run as a mm. supposed utopia that, um, well, if you're over the age of 25... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks for enjoying Utopia. Have a wonderful, um, what are they called again? The recycling? Um, um, carousel. Carousel. Have a wonderful carousel. Yeah. Yeah. It's been so long since I've seen it. I should watch it again, actually. <laughs> yeah, it is It is annoying that the stories that offer us a vision of a hopeful future always end up with, oh, but it's built on, <laughs> yeah, built on uh, pressing other people, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. it's like, well, does it happen? Yeah, that's a good point. Something maybe with inside conflict more than outside conflict would be your best bet for that. I would recommend Ecotopia, which mm. is a little book. It, it's it's technically kind of set in the 80s, but it's about a journalist goes to visit the Pacific Northwest in the U.S. because they have seceded from the Union and created a... Uh, essentially a an ecological utopia um, they have uh, rules about commercials and being able to lie about products and and things like that that actually smacks of uh, how Europe approaches it a lot these days mm. um, you know not not quite as uh, visceral and and uh, king of the mountain as we have in the US. <laughs> But it, it's, a, it's a really good book. It's really fascinating because it delves into a lot of different aspects of Ecotopia and how they function that. And there's actually a sequel that's pretty decent, too. Okay. There's something else that someone said after or before the um, Ocean Punk and Echo Punk. Arcane Punk. I would imagine that's magic. Well, now I'm curious, arcane punk versus mage punk, what's, what's the difference? More like uh, Rasputin than our modern concepts of mages? I'm not sure. I'm going to look in the chat and see who mentioned hmm. Swiftness Author. I'm calling you out. You mentioned arcane yeah. punk, and all three huh. of us are actually a bit stumped. Anything you want to give us as a recommendation? Or... Itachi says, Arcane Punk, Mage Punk, or... Thank you, Itachi. Mana Punk. Mana? I feel like Mana Punk would be more isekai setting base where you've entered a game world. Or game lit where you're in the game world as well. Like Magic the Gathering kind of thing... That might actually be arcane punk magic the gathering mm. i think yeah Ar- arcane and manes um, would probably be something like the way the witches and the wizards in this world are different so the, the wizards are very much sort of like should we say normal <laughs> magic or strict magic where the, the witches are more sort of earth magic and natural the, ways and things the wizards aren't magic they, they concentrate more on food than anything yeah. else <laughs> good food 
but yeah. So Swiftus author says that arcane punk is like science fantasy. Also think of Warcraft. And she would say that instead of ocean punk, Disney's Atlantis would fall into this category for her than really the ocean punk that we had maybe put it to earlier, which is interesting. Um, I admit that's, I thought I knew most of the punks and I guess that's the correct word, most. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, by by that token, um, pretty much any one of the, oh my gosh, how many stories do we have of people, you know, traveling to the center of the earth would fall into that because of, mm. you know, it, they, they, they say <laughs> it's science, but is it really? The, the science you know, of the time, of maybe, when you could dig deep enough and find dinosaurs. A Lost World. Mm. Mm -hmm. If anyone else remembers that TV show, please, League please Legends. tell me I'm not the only one that watched Lost World. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. <laughs> Wait, was it was it that required for existing during that time period? <laughs> I think it was. Uh, Itachi, someone else, Itachi mentioned there's an anime called Desert Punk. And I thought that was pretty interesting. And that reminded me, Trigun would be a wonderful desert punk anime. I don't remember if Trigun was on a different world or was on Earth. So that definitely... Um, if you add cattle, then you get... What do you think that's called? <laughs> cattle punk. <laughs> if you add the westerns like that. So a couple of other questions that have come in, and we, we will put the questions in to break apart from all the punks we've been talking about because there's not there's more we're not done oh. yet <laughs> kind of like the definition there's always more <laughs> games gm asks how has punk impacted the writing arena I would say that there's a lot more mainstreamness to mm. uh, rebelling against authority. You know, like the, we used to have books like 1984 and things like that, but now it's more like everyday people, you know, the, the street rats rebelling kind of thing. They've always been around, but they've been a little more niche-ish and now <laughs> they're, they're really getting more into the main view and people are seeing more of it primarily because of the constant they they make a really great aesthetic so they get turned into <laughs> movies a lot a lot of punk turns into movies because you know visuals awesome but i i think that the the attitude of um rebelling for what would previously be considered smaller things, mm. smaller injustices, is becoming more common. Okay. Keith, anything you want to add to that? Um, I think just in terms of the whole actually publishing industry, the, the fan fiction and self-publishing, all that kind of stuff, is the punk idea, you know. If, mm. I wouldn't have two books out if I was waiting for the industry to agree to publish my work. Um, <laughs> so, doing it yourself um, is very much the punk idea. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, that's the thing, but I'll figure out how to do that. And you do. You know. That's so a very good point. It, yeah. It's largely run by Amazon. <laughs> Self-publishing. <laughs> we are lit punk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I just want to say lit punk could be the Reader Die manga series. Because <laughs> they use um powers, magic powers, personal powers, and can make the paper do whatever they want. Paper, form the shape of wings so I can glide away from this like problem over here. And they've got it. You'd think. But I'm, I'm going to hesitate <laughs> at calling anything streams. origami punk, to be honest. <laughs> I have a follow-up question with the punk impacted writing. Do you feel that punk itself has merged a little bit with the anti-hero and the noirness to become grittier? I 
I would argue that that was just a natural thing, like mer- little beads of mercury coming together. <laughs> <laughs> like, punk, anti-hero, those are the same picture. <laughs> Mm. Uh, you know, there, there's yes, but I think that's more of definitionally as opposed to anything that's like it, I, you, you know what? Am I making sense? I, I'm trying to get words out. It's not working. Yeah, there's you, you you um, always been gritty aspects to it. You yeah, know? I mean that was the original original mm. punk idea was I'm not dressed nice. You know? Um, and certainly with like cyberpunk, it was always a dark dystopian future, and so hygiene is for sheep. Yeah, so <laughs> dirty, messy, cobbled together. You know, that's the sort of punk idea. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I just have increased my reading and have gotten more of it. I'm not sure. So, does anyone here play Cyberpunk 2077? I know of it, but I haven't played it myself. So, yeah, such bad reviews when it came out. It was so unfinished that yeah. I haven't got into it yet. People are saying it's worked it's okay now, but I'm going to give it a bit of time. If I want bugs in my video games, Bethesda, I love you, but I will play Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had a question of how is Punk impacted, or sorry, sorry, is Cyberpunk 2077, how has that impacted, or what inspiration do you get from the video game. And I'm like, to be honest, I've gotten zero inspiration from the video game. Um, yeah. Uh, I haven't played it. Yeah. Okay. It turns to Cyberpunk, Johnny the Monty, all the way. So it's, it's really hilarious because he's talking about like having like 12 kilograms in his head as being a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So funny. It was back when like you couldn't get yeah. to save your life. Um, there was a, 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 oh, Johnny Mnemonic. They, they, they didn't have enough chips, literally, in the real world, so like RAM was really expensive. So 12 gig was a lot, 24. It's funny. Just love the expression, hack the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, mm, I, I don't think that kind of updated itself either. No. Uh, sometimes Raven and Itachi say Cyberpunk 2077 is on sale. Uh, sometimes Raven loves it to pieces. It's not that bad, and apparently it's been kind of fixed. Um, mm. I, I'll i stick with my, like, atom and nuclear. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm too busy playing uh, yeah. Horizon in the West. Definitely. So we're going to go back to the punks, and mm. I'm going to go through. There are a couple here that I'm curious what definitions you guys will give. We have Fae Punk. I, I imagine that's um, fairies and yeah. uh, uh, carnival. Uh, punk? Uh, carnival? Uh, carnival Row. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So kind of a, a steampunk slash mage punk, but with Fae. Yeah. Yeah, so mystical creatures being real and part of society. Maybe even bringing in the don't eat anything from the Fey world or you'll be stuck there. Don't give a Fey your real name or something bad is going to happen to you. Nothing good. Never anything yeah, good. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good sort of allegory for um, the dispossessed within society because they're always <laughs> generally the outsiders and they're always looked down upon so they're looking the maids for the, for the human beings. And, Did yeah. somebody say bright? Did somebody say bright? Maybe. Somebody said bright, right? Nobody said bright yet. I don't. I don't hear bright <laughs> from the wrong. ghost that was talking to me earlier. So. <laughs> okay, look. I loved that movie. No, no, I, I did too. It. I wish it actually. There was supposed to be plans to continue it as like a TV series, uh, and I'm like, I wish just, that would have happened. That would have been really interesting to see how it played out. I think the movie yeah. could have been better. But I liked yeah, the, the world movie setting. Definitely could have been better. <laughs> the key thing about that movie is all of the possibilities that it opened up. Yes. Like, oh. mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's the what's the thing from the eighties, nineties? What was it? Damn it! It's very much the same thing. 
I'd mind, mind if you think about it, yeah. Uh, oh, um... It wasn't V, it was the other one. Alien Nation. Yes, Alien Nation. Yeah. Okay. Very similar setup. Yes, yes. Biopunk. Bioshock is actually more of a deco punk, mm. and Would it be that one like genetic engineering. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, now, now I'm thinking uh, Resident Evil here. A little bit. So there's two at this point where we're enhancing humans, almost like cybernetics, and we were talking earlier about cyberpunk and having those into a human body. But cyberpunk is more about the mechanics being added to the body. And as sometimes Raven actually has said in the chat, biopunk is similar, but focus more on the genetic enhancements. And so Bioshock definitely could be, because you do have your bi biological enhancements within the game, but the setting itself is so much the character where you are that a lot of people actually say it's more deco punk mm. than biopunk. So I can see a toss up for both of those. Mm. Well, and I mean, the thing is, it, it would be so punk just to be like, <laughs> yeah, it's multiple punks. It is multi punk. Go. It's punk punk. Mm. Do punk. <laughs> um, now, what, uh, what is entwined with biopunk, I've heard is nanopunk. Okay. Which I just assume is now robots within your body. Yeah, nanonites. Yep. Yeah, and it has to do the horn and the computer game got it. Exactly. Um, I remember uh, reading a story with like you had nanites in your body from birth that gave you certain mm -hmm. powers and then it was whichever ones went off in your body. <laughs> And I'm like, that was... That, that sounds harsh. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that doesn't sound great. You don't get a choice, but, you know. Like, okay, so, look, it's a baby boy, and now it's a war scene. <laughs> what? Um, so could one argue that um, the uh, Infinity War Iron Man would be nanopunk? Or would it have to be biologically nano? Would it have, would it have to be inside? Huh. Yeah. I, I'm going to say that nanites, as we know them now, would be inside. Because that's where they can actually do the stuff they're supposed to do. You inject them into the body, and they yeah, go yeah. fix something. Like Supposedly, they're supposed to go fix something. They're supposed to go enhance something. They're supposed to go get rid of something. On the other hand, you can have a cloud of nanites. And if in your story that cloud is outside the body, but still affecting what you're doing and how you show yourself, how you present yourself, I can see that as nano nanopunk. Yeah. Like the the okay. okay. Yes, yes, I know. Doctor, Doctor Who again. again. <laughs> um, the 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 uh, bombing of London episodes, the um Oh gosh, something child. Gas mask. Mm. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody lives. Everybody lives. Okay. Yeah. Yes, um, the empty child. And someone else mentioned that there was a mini series from about ten years ago, nanites that disabled electricity. And I was like, that one, huh? And someone was like, oh, revolution. And I'm like. Oh, Revolution! The miniseries I never continued with because I kept nitpicking everything and getting annoyed <laughs> at it. And I never learned what had taken the electricity out. And I'm just like... That, that, that series, yes. <laughs> okay. Question then. How would you categorize the ship who sang? Ooh, 
Anne McCaffrey's um, book. Yeah, Anne Anne McCaffrey, essentially, uh, if children are born with too many, like, disabilities, then they're put into a pod and connected to a computer and, and taught how to use, like, entire cities or spaceships or something as their bodies so they become the computer brain but they are still a living biological entity I would put that as cyberpunk myself yeah Keith any thoughts on that it's been a long time since I've read the book too I don't know Yeah. I mean, yeah. cyberpunk, yeah, but at the same time, can you take them out? Will they survive? Uh, yes, and maybe. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, they, maybe. They, they, tend, they tend to become very um, dependent on the uh, environment that sustains them, but mm. technically you can remove them and they won't, like, immediately be dead. Mm. They'll just probably die really quick. Yeah, but I imagine there'll be psychological effects. I don't know. So during this time, we have about 17 minutes left of the panel. And I would like to ask the audience, do you have any questions? And this, it doesn't have to be the category of punk. <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys that there is more than one. Yeah, yeah. And like self-publishing questions or anything like that. Well, we didn't even go with like sandal punk, stone punk, mm. clock punk, and... Diesel punk. I actually have a diesel punk fairy tale retelling. I love it to bits. <laughs> yeah. Echo punk is another one, definitely. Ghost punk. Yeah, there. As we said earlier, just make sure that punk is an important part of your story. The other part of it, there's probably a niche. Yeah. And if you're if you're wondering about dessert or cake punk, I am definitely want to write a story on that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, RPG Dinosaur Bob says, how do you categorize Doctor Who? Isn't the whole series, like, omnipunk? You know, punk of everything? The punk of punks? I would actually consider that, like, time punk. Um, I, even now, with all of the time travel stuff that has come out since Doctor Who began, it's still really, like... His behavior is not normal time traveler stuff. <laughs> so, like, you know, the doctor is in fact very punk in regards to how he approaches. Things. Oh yeah. Well, I guess, I guess he's not even he anymore, is he? Like, now, now that he's had a a female form, did, did his pronouns change? I would say because it's reincarnation, that whatever the reincarnation is is the current pronoun. And if you talk about yeah. a different reincarnation, maybe the pronoun changes, maybe not. Yeah, how would you define funny. how would you define cisgender in a species that can reincarnate as either gender? These are the questions that keep me from sleeping. <laughs> maybe well, in that society. Well, that's how I would... <laughs> Sorry, Keith, you're going to answer that. <laughs> I was saying you you'd be one at a time. I was gonna say maybe the gender you're born becomes the definition of cis. Yeah. And then just whatever you reincarnate into is whatever you reincarnate into. Well, we don't know. Very do, do we know how time was reproduced? I mean, that speaks to gender. Yeah. yeah. But as I said, the show as well, they're still called the time walls, not time ladies. <laughs> I thought the Reyna was a time lady. No, she was time lord. You're right. They do use that as a title, though. Hmm. Gender is transitionary for time lords. Yeah, exactly. I, I love Doctor Who, and he is definitely punk, but I hmm. want to call it space opera. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I do think that it depends on quote unquote the episode or the adventure that he's on at that point because he, he, he tends to like brush up against a lot of different versions 
Yeah. yeah. Like, layer scale base. Like, at least, because it's been around so long, it's very much sort of defies classic sci-fi. And then they just lay a skin over the top. <laughs> you know, this, this type of story, that type of story. This could be a horror story. Yeah. Yeah, Swiftness author says space punk. And I'm like, eh, it could be space punk. But at least for me, I'm a little too attached to Earth as the planet and so if it happens on earth i don't want to call it space punk even though probably to the doctor from their point of view it would be space punk hmm. it's funny what gets defined as punk and what gets its own thing so like space you get space operas you don't get space punk as such you get altered history you don't get history punk. that's yeah. an interesting thought yeah alternate history au alternate universe but yeah you're right it's not it's not really history punk no they just wonder what point the drama becomes the, huh. the idea you're working with is big enough to have its own name yeah well and i mean the thing is is it possible to even have space punk i mean what what exactly is the the man you're fighting against in space? And isn't it very yeah? I mean, like there there are so many possibilities in space that it's kind of hard to be like rebelling against the the status quo of everything. <laughs> you know, you know, it's it's an interesting concept, and and I I I would encourage people to explore that. You know, can you make a space punk? There was, there was a, uh, a game made by the same company that made Fallout, Outer Worlds? Hmm. I believe it was Outer Worlds. That, if anything, that would be space punk. Because the sp space has been colonized by hmm. one of two companies. And yeah. trust me, when I say they are set out to get every single nickel out of you, it's not the nickel, it's down to the half penny. <laughs> and if anything needs to be against the corporation or the man those two companies would definitely be it so I think it is out there but it might be also labeled as space opera hmm. or um, like hard sci-fi yeah Maybe, Maybe even delving, delving into, into like space, space westerns. westerns. Mm -hmm. You know the 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 wrestler, the the pirate, the you know. Yeah, definitely. So we have about ten minutes. Is there anything well, else you want to say about punk, or anything else you want to say, author goddess? <laughs> Uh, I, I was just going to remind everybody that we sh should be raiding here shortly. But, um, yeah, be punk. Mm. Fight it, fight the man in your writing. You know, don't even have to get your hands dirty that way. Unless you spill the ink. Swiftness author says, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey punk. And I'm like, that's the best punk ever. Oh, speaking of punk though, Keith. You were showing your book covers off during the intermission oh, and your yeah. Dexter pin. I want people to see your Dexter oh. pin because that is awesome. You're going to make me stand up. I'm uh, going to make you stand up, exactly. I'm cross legged on my chair. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so there's, there's my Dexter, Dexter pin. pin. That cat has a very mischievous grin. Uh, in the two books. Yes. Oh, Dexter and Sinister detecting agents. Just talking to kind of cat. The Dragonfly did a great company with a fantastic cover by Mike Smith. I that saw that cover on Twitter, cover. and I definitely yeah. want to read the second book now. <laughs> yeah, if there's anything to say about punk, it's like, if you, whatever you want to do, embrace the punk idea and just give it a go. You know, because you never know what you know. That's how I ended up with these. So just did it. Exactly. Just have a go and see what you come up with. And, you know. Let your freak flag fly. Yeah. You, you can rewrite a bad, badly written story. You can't rewrite it at the page. Just do it. I like that. Now, before we go raid, and I say thank you for this panel, where can people find you to find book releases and news? 
Are you on Twitter? Are you on Twitch? Are you on Instagram? Are you on TikTok? Are you on any of the 20,000 social media places <laughs> none of us probably want to be on? <laughs> um, well, I'm mostly on Twitter, a bit of Instagram, uh, and I've got my own um, all the sites. It's all, all of it is Keith W. Dickinson. So it's at Keith W. Dickinson or Keith W. Dickinson. And I'm going to try to find this quickly and drop it in the chat because honestly, it is much easier to click on a link and find someone than it is to, I have to go to Twitter myself. I have to go look them up. I have to actually do work. <laughs> that, is, that is the top tip of any kind of um, social marketing thing is make it easy for people. You know, yeah, definitely make it two easy. Clicks when you can make it one. And this is Author Goddesses as well. And I'm also going to tell you that Author Goddess is on Twitch. I know that Keith is not on Twitch, but thank you very much for joining us today. <laughs> Let me get Author Goddess's account. Should I have had this prepared well, beforehand? No, don't steal Probably. My account, please. And here you can follow Author Goddess on Twitch and join in on productive writing sprints. So today... All words are good words. <laughs> <laughs> write the words. Uh, Game of Tomes is coming up in July. That's another one to remember. Uh, Game of Tomes, Keith, by the way, is a thrice yearly event, April, July, and November, that takes place on Twitch. We have heads of about six houses and a couple more minor houses, but you choose a house, you write your words, and then you count your words and give them to your house head, or mm. give them to any participating stream, and those words Divide. count for your house. The mm. house with the highest number of words is Badge of Honor. <laughs> oh. At least in April and July, there's a Badge of Honor, in November, you're running from zombies. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> and there might have been I'm a zombie not. on this stream is actually Sarah. <laughs> the Horde. <laughs> okay, folks. Keith, Sarah, thank you both very much for joining us today. It was wonderful to meet face to face with you, Keith. I really am enjoying your Sinister and Dexter, Dexter and Sinister books. Sorry, <laughs> I flipped the title. And Author Goddess, you are part of the planning committee for Conduit. It has been amazing being on the planning committee with you. Thank you for taking the time out of your sleep schedule <laughs> to come here. Speaking you had to zombies. get up at 6.30 this morning, right? Well, I had to get up at 6 because, you know, I don't just roll out of bed looking like this. <laughs> you don't just roll out of bed, huh? I mean, to be fair, I think a lot of us do roll out of bed. <laughs> So, and for once, it was not me being, you know, at the worst time in the world. <laughs> I'm happy to kind of give that out. Everyone who came by to watch this, thank you very much. If you have any further questions, please feel free to talk to Keith, myself, or Sarah in the Discord. And if there's enough questions, we'll open up an overflow section. Yeah, what's bed, says Itachi. I'm like, yep, yeah, that's exactly it. We're going to go that, start our raid. You lay while you're playing video games. <laughs> Sleep is when you can't write anymore and your face hits the keyboard. <laughs> this character, why does he go zzzz? <laughs> true. Very true. Okay. Get some food, get some water, get some sleep, get some rest. Enjoy a bunch of the panels that are coming up for Writer's Conduit. Self-inserts aren't the enemy. No, really. Um, writing on medium, condense, organize and chat, using TTRPGs and writing fiction, and finally the closing ceremonies. For now, coffee signing out. Peace. Okay, we are rating, we have rated, and I am going to